Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another song reaction. We are back on Risk of Rain 2, another one from that same album and same game. I had planned to do this uh, probably close to two months ago, but I think the stuff with the room got in the way and I kind of forgot that it was there for a second, but we're back and I could finally get to this one. Pobat's been sitting there in the list waiting for this song for a while. So without further ado, let's go. Also, this song is like eight minutes, so buckle in. Uh, it's gonna be a long one. All right. Very tasteful chords. And for the record, yes, I am very aware of the Prince reference that this song is. <laughs> I don't know if I'll recognize any references that may be to Prince's works. I only know like two Prince songs well enough, but I'm going to let the song be its own thing. So hmm. it's already kind of selling his vibe anyway. So Woo. Hmm. Very, very crispy snare. I'm loving that snare. It's a great sample. It almost sounds like, I mean, it's a very tight sound. It almost sounds like the uh, snare wires are the thing being hit. Which that would be kind of cool. Flip the snare upside down, play it like that. It'd be an interesting sound for sure. Woo. Oh yeah. Even playing around with the Prince flair on the guitar too. At first I thought it was just gonna be like a melody reference, but this dude's going for the whole feel of Prince's like vibey tracks. Mm. That funkadelic sound. <laughs> okay, maybe not quite funkadelic, but definitely funk. I think a lot of this is just going to be me vibing. Throw in some filters. Give us a little bit of a break. I like that. Woo! I knew that we were going to be coming back into it. Wasn't sure if it was going to be on that beat or not. <laughs> so smooth. Also, that's got to be one of the, like cleanest bass drum samples I think I've ever heard. It's got such a punch to it. Mm. Mm. Right now I'm bummed that nobody's ever requested this on like one of my live streams when I'm playing the drums. This would be such a good song to just you sit in the pocket the whole time. Ooh. Except for that. Mm. 
little bit of a solo. Mm. Brilliant pitch bends. Brilliant sound. Love that. <laughs> Love that sound. It's just such amazing work from Chris. Like, I don't know much of Chris's work. Clearly, a lot of stuff for Risk of Rain. But this is insane levels of inspiration. It's like, some people might be like, that's repetitive. And I'm like, you hearing this? Who cares? <laughs> Like, I could listen to this general riff for a long time. Mm. Ooh, kind of go for an ethereal sound on the, uh, the fade out there. Just let some of those sounds just kind of, yeah, like exactly like that, just kind of float away like dust. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Throw in some dissonance. Why not? Gonna get another little bit of it or nah? There it is. Just a little bit. What an interesting way to end this song. <laughs> Whew. Jesus. Okay. What a song. What an inspired masterpiece of a track. I did not think that it was going to be quite that sick. The entire song being a reference to the flavor of Prince's music wasn't a direction I thought it was going to take. I thought it was going to be more like, oh yeah, it's a song. It'll reference one or two riffs throughout, you know, and just kind of sprinkle some bits. But the whole feel of that song was very Prince inspired. I didn't think that they were going to go quite that direction with it. And I'm glad they did. What a great choice. The overall funk groove that comes with that being a Prince inspired track really does root deep for me. I love myself some funk. Just sitting there in the pocket is one of my favorite things to do. And funk being designed around that is very much uh, a thing that I enjoy to play. So hearing a song that is entirely a love letter to that feel is just right up my alley. I love the way this one sounds. The guitar was so on point. It actually felt a lot like Prince's uh, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, like infamous solo, just especially as it got into the solo parts later in the song. Just so much of that. It felt so good. The pitch bends were completely characteristic. Even the little I do know of Prince's music in the grand scheme and compared to others, I was never huge into Prince, but of course I've heard plenty of Prince songs, but I only know a few 
really well that there's enough, right? I I can piece together exactly why this song is a love letter to his sound and that entire energy that Prince's music had. And it just it nails it. It's so crispy, even with the synths going on, just to kind of support things. And they don't sound exactly like what Prince would have used. It modernizes it a bit. It allows it to be its own sound while still paying homage. And that's just creativity incarnate if anything else right it's just this love letter let me say i love you in my own way i think that that level of respect is so cool and i think chris did an fantastic job of doing that that little hook in there to that bueno 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 like that that's going to be in my head for like hours at minimum if not i'm going to be humming that tomorrow while i'm just sitting around my house that is going to lock itself in the recesses of my mind it somehow makes your brain just go ooh, yeah like i want to keep that and store it away it's some it's so simple just one, two, one, two, one, two, three. It's it's so repetitive. And that's probably why it works so well for that particular reason. It just, it the simplicity is something that so many musicians kind of overlook. When at the end of the day, a lot of songs that do so well are pretty simple and pretty repetitive. And having that sort of a riff to just be the route back to whatever they're doing at the time this of course being mostly that solo section because it really just acts as a glue to keep your brain just locked on the song like i was saying i could listen to that riff for hours i could listen to somebody solo over that for Ever, and I could never get bored. That is to say, I could definitely get bored playing the drums over that song. Like, it is 100%. I love the pocket, like I said, but playing it for that long with that one rhythm would definitely be a little tiring. But that doesn't matter. I'm not playing the drums right now. I'm just listening. I'm vibing. And this is, this supports that so well. I don't entirely know the context of this song. I don't know the game. And I, this feels like it would be like a credit song to me. 100% just. I can see in my mind's eye the credits rolling up in front of me. And that spot at the end of the song where it kind of dips into these pitch bends where it goes like minor and dissonant in the sound. It doesn't keep it in the more upbeat feel that the rest of the song had. And I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, I didn't hate it. It was just like, oh, okay, that's where we're going. It immediately took me out of what I was feeling and it changed the mood just enough it almost unsettled me a little bit, like something didn't feel right. And if that was intentional, it 100% succeeded in that goal for me. I went from feeling very comfortable and just kind of bopping with this rhythm and this energy the whole time and just feeling out the, the space of the music. And then once it shifted and the notes changed and it kind of took that away that comfort was removed for me once it went into that energy and i'm like oh where are we going now you know it, it added a question to the song that was otherwise just kind of been like hey you're here welcome to the end you know <laughs> like you did it <laughs> and being confronted with those uh minors at the end i was like hello what is this like why are you asking me a question i thought we were done <laughs> and i i have a feeling that that is intentional that this song with that ending was supposed to do that and allow you to be like oh pop, 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 hold on like slow your roll we're not done yet and that's that's really cool from just like a psychology end so chris did a fantastic job with this song i again don't know the full context of what this game has in terms of music or like the gameplay even i really don't know i've only ever seen some minor gameplay of it so it's it's unique to be able to hear something that so clearly paints a picture but at the same time makes you question that painting that you just finished looking at. And you're like, wait, hold on. <laughs> but I'll digress here. Chris is a brilliant composer. I had high hopes after the first one that I listened to. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I like the way that sound design played a factor into that song. And this one, while it does have a little bit of that, not nearly as much, the entire feel of this song the way that it was so masterfully driven and didn't rely too much on being just references that sort of ability is the mark of a master composer if i may be so bold so just brilliant work claps to chris 
what a composer, what a job on this soundtrack. Just the few I've heard are already so fantastic. And I can only imagine the rest of the soundtrack for Risk of Rain 2 is this good, if not better. So just brilliant work all around. But I think that's about all I got to say. So thank you all so very much for watching. If you want to have me react to something specific, by all means, leave a comment down below with something you want me to hear. It doesn't really matter where it's from, video games, anime, anything. I will try and listen to it. And aside from that, if you want to follow me and support me, you know how to do all that. And I will see you in the next video. <gasps> Goodbye.